Hi, everyone. I'm Richard Carrier, SVP and General Manager at Cyberlink. Hi, everyone. My name is Craig Campbell. I'm the Manager and Sales Engineer at Cyberlink. Hi, so today we will uh, present to you some of FaceMe's uh, capabilities specific to IoT uh, devices and use cases. So, Internet of Things. It's a big area of importance for facial recognition. And I will show you some of uh, the capabilities, use cases specific to it. Afterwards, Craig will demonstrate some of these features. Let me explain to you how FaceMe works and how it's relevant to IoT. So what is Cyberlink FaceMe? It's essentially the world's top cross-platform AI facial recognition engine. It offers an accuracy rate of 99.7%, which places it among the most precise tools in the world. It's optimized for edge computing, which is quite relevant for IoT, and it runs across all platforms, which is also very important for IoT. It powers several uh, types of IoT solutions uh, that we will touch on throughout this presentation, anywhere from security and authentication to creating amazing user experiences. FaceMe has four functionalities, essentially. It can detect faces, how many people are in a video feed. It can recognize individuals by analyzing vectors on someone's face. It can extract facial attributes like gender, age, mood, and it can also identify some face landmarks. One thing that FaceMe does that is quite relevant to IoT where you don't always have devices that are in the perfect control environment for lighting and position of camera is our true theater technologies, which essentially enhance lighting, edges, reduce noise, and can upscale resolution. So it enables very precise facial recognition while minimizing bias. FaceMe also integrates entice spoofing, uh, which means that you cannot place a photo or a video in front of a camera to try to authenticate uh, someone. And very important, especially in the context of IoT, is that it encompasses all computing configurations. And what do I mean here is any device that has a chip literally can support and can integrate FaceMe. Uh, it runs on every OS. In fact, uh, we support over 10 OSs. So obviously Windows, Linux, Android, iOS, and several flavors of Linux, actually. Uh, it supports inference engines, such as OpenVINO and others, so that if you have a device that has a very low power chip, we have ways to improve performance dramatically even in a very low cost, low energy environment. And it supports a very wide range of CPUs. So again, making it very flexible for deployments. FaceMe also comes with several uh, facial recognition models, each of which are optimized for different factors, such as the execution time, the accuracy, the size of the template, so the small file that contains the vectors of someone's face, and the size of the model that needs to sit on the device. So based on the specific needs, we can adapt the solution a very, uh, in a very high performance way. Uh, we also have, I was talking about hardware optimization. Uh, one example is our partnership with Intel. So one thing uh, from Intel is the ability to integrate the Movidius VPU, uh, which if you compare to a Celeron CPU can run the uh, facial recognition 17 times fact, faster and can save also 72% of the CPU usage. And Movidius can be implemented in different ways. If all you have is a basic device with a USB port, you can connect one of these compute sticks. Uh, we also have partnerships with Advantech so that it can be integrated in industrial PCs. Or we have partnership with IEI for a card that can be integrated into a device. We also optimize for OpenVINO from Intel, which means that we can increase performance by 500% with OpenVINO. And finally, uh, we have a very fast search algorithm for extraction in database. So take, for example, a database of 6 million people. It would take only 0.16 seconds to recognize someone. So Cyberlink is really uniquely positioned versus competition. 
Uh, we, there's a few companies uh, that are also very precise in the world. Most of them actually are from China and Russia, uh, which are companies that are, are from countries posing security problems and concerns in many cases. Closer to us in the US, the leaders like Amazon, Microsoft, and Google all have solutions, but they are cloud-based, so they're not optimized for edge which puts us in a very unique position. So Cyberlink would face me. Not only do we offer one of the most accurate facial recognition tools and algorithm, but also we are edge-based and uh, we are flexible to run on literally envi every environment. There's nobody else in the market that has so many options for configurations as we do. So edge is very important in the case of IoT. First, for an obvious reason, IoT devices are at the edge. So it enables a very fast and precise data recognition immediately at the device. It doesn't mean that it cannot be connected to workstations if you need to do deeper processing or analytics. And also, it can be connected to cloud servers, mainly data centers. The AI training and inference is something that happens on the cloud, but it's typically it's something that is run by Cyberlink as we generate the models. IoT at the Edge offers real benefits to IoT manufacturers. Uh, processing data on the Edge device has much lower cost than cloud computing. Also, processing happens in seconds, in milliseconds, not in seconds. And finally, for security, if you don't need to send someone's picture or video of people on the cloud, and keep it local, uh, you increase dramatically the security of your deployment. Let's go through some use cases. So simple one is a smart door locks. Basically, use your face to unlock the door. This doesn't need to be connected to a cloud server, so it's very robust. You don't need a, cloud con a web connection all the time. And it does just that. It can be implemented in very light devices can be also expanded to full facility access control systems. So you can grant access to employees or registered visitors or send alerts to people who are not recognized. It can connect in company security systems very easily while remaining quite light at the edge. FaceMe is also used for time clock and signing in employees. So it pre provides very precise frictionless authentication, which is very hygienic, think of environments like retail, restorations, healthcare, uh, the fact that you don't have to handle any access card or use your fingerprint is very good. And here again, it can be run in very low cost uh, chipsets at the edge. And uh, there are benefits. It will decrease absenteeism if people cannot uh, check in clock in their friend. It can also help better protect money assets in secure areas. FaceMe is also integrated into security camera systems. So it can be integrated directly into cameras, connect into workstations, and even send automatic alerts uh, if, let's say, a VIP is identified or a blacklisted person is identified. And here we integrated Cyberlink's own technology called U Alerts, which is derived from our U Messenger instant messaging tool to send messages to a smartphone or a computer. In retail, FaceMe can be used for digital signage. So based on people's demographics, it can either just collect statistics or it can personalize the sign based on who's looking at it, based on their age, their gender, and how interested they seem to be. FaceMe also can be used for transaction processing. So you use your face as your uh, ID. You don't need a card. So nobody can steal it from you. It can be instantaneous. It's frictionless. And, uh, or it can even be used as a secondary means of identification, let's say, at an ATM. When you bring together digital signage and frictionless transaction, essentially you create these uh, interactive kiosks. So just imagine you go to your favorite coffee shop or fast food restaurant, you are recognized through the loyalty program, you are offered what you like, you don't even need to pull anything out of your pocket to pay, not even your phone. So that's one uh, advantage of it. We also integrated FaceMe into concierge robots. So people who uh, typically would greet customers at the entrance of a store. Now you can have these fun little robots who do that. One area where facial recognition is becoming very popular at the moment is the healthcare industry. 
the fact that uh, FaceMe can provide very accurate, instantaneous, frictionless, hygienic uh, access is very important. So we are deployed for it on medicine cabinets, for example. But there's also all sorts of other use cases, for example, integrated diagnostic systems, laboratory autom automation, or patient monitoring. And here could be patient monitoring, registration, visitor registration and monitoring, employees, uh, access to different areas and healthcare areas, all that done frictionless and with a uh, level of hygiene. So I, I gave examples. We have, these are some of the deployments we've had in the last year alone in all of the areas that I mentioned throughout the presentation. Uh, there's a whole lot more. So FaceMe is being adopted by large uh, percentage of uh, companies that are looking into facial recognition and we'd be delighted to engage with you on that. So to conclude, before we do the demo, I see four obvious benefits for IoT companies. Uh, FaceMe can bring interesting new value-added use cases, uh, can definitely differentiate and personalize the user experience in a way that adds a lot of value uh, to the solution. It's robust and affordable to implement even in existing devices and technology. And it's a natural case to create a SaaS model, so bring recurring revenues. So with that, I will let, let Craig show you a demo. Thank you, Richard, on that detailed explanation on how FaceMe can work for IoT. So let me launch FaceMe demo app here on my Windows laptop. Now this can be any edge device, whether it's a laptop, Android device, Linux, iOS, we support all the platforms. Here you can see the FaceMe operate, SDK in operation. You can see the first thing it does is look for motion. If it detects motion, it looks for a face. If it sees a face, it then creates a vector mask by mapping the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. We save that vector mask. We don't need that original photo or video anymore, but we can just identify that person by that vector mask. Here you can see we have detection going on every 24 milliseconds. We have ID extraction. That's the vector mask I'm extracting. Then we're trying to match that to a database. And last, the face size. On the top right corner, we're telling you the emotion, age, gender, and face. So I'm an unknown male, angry, happy, surprised, happy, sad. All these emotions are being captured. We're also age. I'm about 54, so we're usually within about a five by four to five year age range on the match. Gender, male, female, obviously male. And last is the angle of your face, the yaw, pitch, and roll. All that is constantly being captured and can be saved to a database. Either a database on your edge device or it can be saved to a database in the cloud. Being an SDK, it can work in multiple locations. So you can do all the gathering on the edge and send the data in bit format, JSON format, encrypted to the cloud for analytics. So all this is constantly going on. How does this work on the edge? Well, let's look at the task manager here. Let's see how much power we're eating up on this system here. So when I bring down, minimize this window, I'll bring up our task manager here real quick. And you can see right now, it's eating up around 43% of my CPU. And all this is running on my laptop device. Now, what if you wanna run this on a slower system? Well, let's do that with, say, a neutrino and Beano stick. So with this neutrino compute stick too, you can run this on a VPU. You can walk, run on a Centrino uh, CPU as well. So right now we're running at 38% here. So if I were to say go to preferences and drop this from ultra high to very high, which is a lower face extraction model and hit apply, that actually gives you the same performance as our ultra high model. But with less demand on the CPU. So now you can see it went from 60 to 18. We're still using 34% of that CPU. And if your edge device is running other applications on there, this still might be too much. And that's where this will come in play. So all I have to do is plug in this neutrino compute stick from Intel into my edge device, my IoT device. In this case, it's my laptop. So as soon as I do that, I then can go into here and choose Enable Movidius VPU. Hit Apply. 
And now instead of using the CPU on my Edge device or my laptop, I'm now using that BPU device. So now you can see it's now dropped down to 10% face me SDK usage out of my CPU. Now, again, that's using our very high model. Let's go even lower to our high precision model. Now with this one, it demands very little CPU or GPU or VPU processing speed, but still gives you the performance. So here you can see I'm in the database, so it's tracking me. It knows I'm male, angry, happy, sad, the number of visits I've been here. How long have I been here? How long have I been sitting in front of this IoT device, watching some display, some message that you might be giving me? So all this data is being captured. My emotions while I'm watching your video, your display, as well as the statistics, who I am. I'm a happy, angry male with a face position moving all over the place. So this is our FaceMe SDK for IoT. It can work on high-end devices and low-end devices. Very little demand on your CPU if you have the right hardware, like a BPU stick. And if you don't have the BPU stick, all you still need is the right profile for facial recognition, whether it's our high model precision, where it can track you, identify you quickly, only at 16% CPU, or all the way up to our ultra high for more performance, more accuracy, for larger crowds detection, you would go with the ultra high, demands more CPU. But if you want performance, and still be able to track large crowds on a low-end edge device IoT, go with our very high model. Again, you get the great performance, great precision, low CPU demand. Thank you. I hope you uh, enjoyed this demo. And let me pass it back to Richard, who can now wrap up and give you details on how you can reach out to us and obtain this SDK for demoing and integration purposes. Okay, thanks, Craig, for the demo. Uh, everyone, uh, please contact us if you want more information, uh, if you want a demonstration of our product. Uh, you can uh, go to cyberlink.com slash me, or also you can uh, join us at uh, sales.faceme at cyberlink.com. Thank you.